Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with and edit MIDI data in the Piano Roll Editor in Logic Pro. If you primarily work with MIDI, you will spend a lot of time in the Piano Roll Editor, as it is the main editor in Logic where you can edit your MIDI recordings. In the previous video, we talked about quantizing MIDI recordings in the Piano Roll Editor. So in this video, I'll demonstrate all of the MIDI editing tools, as well as several helpful functions and shortcuts for MIDI editing. But first, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. As a producer and mixing engineer who primarily works remotely from my home studio, I really appreciate Boombox.io for keeping my projects and client feedback organized and all in one place. I can batch upload uncompressed audio files, I can invite collaborators to listen and leave timestamped feedback on my tracks, and create different versions of a project, and ultimately helps me get the annoying parts of my job done quicker so I can spend more time on being creative as a music producer. But don't take my word for it, try it out for yourself. You can sign up today at boombox.io and get 10 gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so first off, I should probably show you how to create a MIDI region without a MIDI controller and how to enter MIDI notes manually if you do not have a MIDI controller. So let's just delete this MIDI region. Now to create a new MIDI region, all you have to do is have a software instrument up of some kind then you can just right click or control click out here on the timeline and you can create a new MIDI region. Now you can also create a pattern region which we'll talk about in the next video, but let's start with creating a new MIDI region. What this will do is it'll create a one bar MIDI region. So I'm just gonna trim this out to four bars. And then what I can do is just double click on this to open it up in the piano roll editor. And remember you can press the P button to toggle the piano roll editor as a editor within the main logic window. But another way to access this is to select the region, go up to window, and you can select open piano roll, or you can use the shortcut command four. What this will do is it'll open up the piano roll window in its own separate dialogue. Now, if you're doing a lot of composition work and a lot of MIDI sequencing work, you very well might want your piano roll editor to be on a separate display. So that's an easy way to do that. But for sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna keep this here in the editors. Now, just like the tracks area has several snap modes that affect how MIDI regions or really any regions in the tracks area are edited, how they snap to the grid or what grid divisions they snap to, the same exists down here in the piano roll editor. And these affect the way that MIDI notes are edited, trimmed, moved, etc. So you can choose to snap to the grid or not, and you can toggle this by pressing Command G. So this will toggle your snap on and off. And then you can also select between smart mode, bar mode, beats, divisions, ticks, and frames. You can also snap to specific straight values and triplet values, or you can make the grid follow your time quantize. So whatever time quantize uh, value you've selected over here, that's what this does. If I say as time quantize, all of my edits will snap to whatever I've set over here in the time quantize menu. For demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna set this to division. In the middle here, you have your piano roll editor tools. The tool that's on the left is your main left click tool. I typically just keep this on the pointer tool almost 100% of the time. And then the tool on the right is like a secondary tool or a command click tool. So right now this is set to the pencil tool. So when I'm just using my mouse normally, this is just the regular pointer tool. But when I hold command, the switch is over to the pencil tool. So that's how that works. It's a quick way of switching between two different tools without having to constantly change the tool that you're on. Now, another way to quickly access tools in the Piano Roll Editor, and this also works for the tracks area, is you can press T on your keyboard, and this will bring up a menu of all of your MIDI editing tools. Now, by default, if I select another tool here, like the Scissors tool, this is going to assign this to the main left-click tool. So I'll just press T, go back to the Pointer tool. However, if you press T and then hold Command while making a tool selection, Maybe I'll go with the velocity tool here. If you hold command, this will load this up as your secondary command click tool. 
So that's just another quick way to change out tools without having to constantly move the mouse back up to the tools selection. So let's start by adding some notes in with the pencil tool. So the main function of the pencil tool is to input notes manually with your mouse. So if I wanna create a chord over here, maybe an A minor chord, I'll start down here on A and just click with the pencil tool. I can add in a C and an E. Now I have an A minor chord. Let's add a seventh to that and make it an A minor seven. Now, in addition to entering notes with the pencil tool, you can also click and drag while you're using the tool to affect the length or trim of the note. So if I want these to be a little longer, I can click and drag while I'm entering them or drag in and make them smaller. Now, one of the weird peculiarities about Logic's note entry is that Logic remembers the note length and velocity setting of the last note that you created. So for example, if I use my pointer tool to now trim this note, and then if I drag over it and change the velocity, if I go and create another note with the pencil tool, that next note will follow the length and velocity of the last note you created. So I found that a helpful little feature. Sometimes it can be annoying, and I don't believe there's any way you can actually turn that off. It's just a feature that's baked into Logic's Piano Roll Editor. Now, as you're editing MIDI notes, if you drag over a note or create a note, you'll probably notice that the sound is playing, the instrument is playing. If you want to turn that off, you can click right here, and this turns off your MIDI output. You can also toggle this by pressing Option O, and this will toggle this on or off. Now the one next to it is a red button. This is a MIDI input control that allows you to enter notes with something called step input. We'll talk about that in a future video. So for now, just keep that option off. However, if I don't want to hear these notes while editing, I can just turn off MIDI output and I can drag over notes freely without having a bunch of sounds coming through. Now with the pointer tool, there's several things you can do with the pointer tool. Uh, as I just demonstrated, you can drag over a note or notes and you can trim the left or right side of a note to make it longer or shorter. You can also drag over notes and move them up or down to transpose them. So maybe I'll bring this down to E. And you can also duplicate notes. So if I make a selection and hold Option, I can duplicate these notes just like you can duplicate regions. And if I want to maybe just transpose a couple of the notes in this chord, I can click and drag up, and then I'll drag this one up as well. Now there is a quicker way to transpose notes in Logic. If you select one note or multiple notes and you press option up or option down, this will transpose your selection up or down in semitones or half steps. So if I wanted to go from the key of A minor up to the key of C minor, I would just make sure that that first chord on A minor is transposed from A up to C. And now my chords are in a completely different key. Or maybe I want it to go up to E. Again, I'll just hold Option, press up a few times, and now I'm in E minor. Additionally, I can drag over a note or a selection of notes and hold Shift Option and then press up or down, and this will transpose the selection in octaves. So let's say I want to drop these chords down an octave. I'll just press Shift Option down and now we're down in a lower register. Or if I maybe wanted to revoice some of these chords, I could just drag over some of these notes, hit Shift Option up, and now I've revoiced these chords in a different inversion. Maybe I'll pull this one up as well. So Option up and down is semitones, Shift option up and down is by octave. Another MIDI value that we discussed in previous videos was velocity. Now, velocity can be adjusted on a note-by-note -note basis or for a whole selection. So for example, if I select a note and then move the velocity slider over here, you'll see that the note changes colors. So MIDI velocity graphically in the Piano Roll Editor is shown by a range of colors ranging from purple as the lowest velocity and bright red 
for the highest velocity. But one other feature to point out here is that the line in the middle of the note actually represents velocity as well. So this one's a really high velocity. This one's 102. This one I'll pull down to say 60. And this one I'll pull down to like 30. And you'll see that the line in the note extends further for notes that have higher velocities than those with lower velocities. So if you're colorblind and you have trouble seeing the difference between green and red, just pay attention to the line in the middle of the note, and that'll give you a good indication of what the velocity is. You can also adjust velocity for multiple notes at once. So if I wanted to drag over all of these and pull them all down, I could do that. But one thing I wanna point out with velocity is that when you make a velocity adjustment, the adjustments are relative. So if I drag over all of these notes, let's actually pull this red one down a bit. If I drag over all of these notes and I pull them all down, they all move down relative to each other. So this is still loud, this is still soft, and these are four different velocities. If I pull them up, now these are still loud, but just louder. These are still soft, but a little louder, and these are still four different velocities. So they maintain their relative velocities. However, if you want to make all of the notes the same velocity, you can simply drag over them and hold option while moving the velocity slider around, and this will conform them all to the same velocity value. Now I'm gonna hit undo a couple times because I wanna go back and demonstrate another way to adjust velocity, and this is with the velocity tool. Now the velocity tool basically works exactly like the velocity slider. So I can adjust the velocity of individual notes by dragging up or down. I can adjust multiple notes by dragging up or down. And if I adjust a bunch of different velocities at the same time, again, it keeps the relative velocities between these notes. However, if I wanna conform these all to the same velocity, I would just hold option while using the velocity tool, and this will conform them all to the same velocity. Now, one thing you'll notice is if I drag on a note all the way down, it'll show you that's a velocity of one, all the way up, a velocity of 127. But you might remember that in a previous video, I said that velocity is generally a range from zero to 127, not one to 127. So where is zero? Zero's not here because zero is essentially a note off message. It basically turns the note off. So you wouldn't want a velocity of zero because that would just make the note inaudible. Now, if these little help tags that pop up all the time are kind of annoying to you, you can actually turn them off. If you go up to Logic Pro, Settings, Display, under Windows here, you can turn off your help tags. And so now when I make a velocity adjustment or I hover over one of these controls, those little help tags won't be popping up all the time. Next up, let's talk about the eraser tool. It does exactly what it sounds like. It deletes notes. I almost never use the eraser tool because there's just no need. You can just click on a note and hit delete. Although I suppose it does save you one more keyboard press if you're going through and deleting just certain notes. The eraser tool for me has more useful features up in the tracks area than it does down in the piano roll editor. So again, I almost never use it, but it's there if you wanna use it. The finger tool essentially is a trim or note length tool. What this does is it allows you to only adjust the length of notes without adjusting the pitch or position of notes. So notice there, I tried to drag up and down and it wouldn't move the notes. It'll only adjust the trim. I don't really use this tool much either, but I do find it helpful when you are selecting a large number of MIDI notes and you want to trim all of them at once and you don't want to risk accidentally moving the notes or transposing the notes as could happen with the pointer tool. So that's really all the finger tool is good for is adjusting note length. Next up, we have the scissors tool. I'm gonna go ahead and just trim these back out here. The scissors tool allows you to separate notes and this is dependent on the snap mode that you've selected. So if I just zoom in here a bit, I can select this chord and then I can cut the chord right there, and maybe I'll cut it again here, and now I've created a new rhythm out of that chord. I'll do the same thing here, and I'll do the same thing here. And all of these edits are snapping to the grid lines, 
based on the snap mode that I've selected. Another quick trick, and this is more of a pointer tool thing, you can actually drag over notes and hit Command R and repeat them, just like you can repeat regions up in the tracks area. The next tool is the glue tool. This is the exact opposite of the scissors tool. You can drag over notes and then use the glue tool to join those notes back together. So this will get rid of all of those scissor tool separations that it created in each of these chords. Next up is the mute tool, and this does exactly what it sounds like. You can use this to mute certain notes of a MIDI recording while leaving others. However, there is a shortcut for this that's really quick and easy. If you select a note or multiple notes and you press Control M, this will mute those notes and those notes will no longer play. And then you can drag over those notes, hit Control M again, or use the mute tool and that will unmute those notes. So again, kind of like with the eraser and finger tools, I don't really use the mute tool very much because of that shortcut. And next up is another one that I don't use very often, and that is the quantize tool. This does, again, exactly what it sounds like. Let me just, for sake of example, move some of these notes off of the grid manually, just to bring them off the grid so they're not perfectly quantized. Now, if I wanted to quantize these, I already showed you, you can just drag over the notes, select a quantization value, and then hit Q, or hit Q on your keyboard to quantize those notes. The quantize tool does the exact same thing. All it does is it takes place of the Q button over here, or the Q key on your keyboard. So the quantize tool will always follow the time quantize menu selection over here. However, there are some situations where the quantize tool is helpful. If I'm going through a really intricate MIDI recording, where I want to quantize certain notes, but not all of the notes, it can be really helpful for that kind of work, just going through and clicking on only the notes that you want to quantize. Next up is the zoom tool. We already talked about the velocity tool. The zoom tool is very simple. You drag over a selection to zoom in, you click again to zoom out, but this tool is basically useless because you can simply hold option with the pointer tool and get the zoom tool and hold option and click the zoom back out. And all of your zoom shortcuts work down here in the piano roll editor. So I can press command left and right for horizontal zoom, and I can press command up and down for vertical zoom. I can even click on the background and press Z to zoom to fit everything within the piano roll editor window. So again, I don't really use the zoom tool very much because of those shortcuts. Now for this video, we're gonna skip the Automation Select tool and Automation Curve tool. We'll come back to these in a future video because we need to learn a bit more about automation and MIDI continuous controller automation first before we dive into these automation tools. However, the brush tool I will cover. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new track to demonstrate this, and I'm gonna create a new drum instrument. So I just have this. And once again, I can select the region up here, hit Command U to loop all of that. You can actually assign the loop from the piano roll editor as well. If you drag over a series of notes and then hit Command U, this will also wrap the locator range around those notes. But notice at the end here, it leaves a little gap because this note does not stretch out to the end of the region. As a workaround, you can actually just press U instead of Command U and you will snap the locators to the nearest bar line. So that's a little helpful trick there. Okay, so let's get back to the brush tool. What the brush tool does is it allows you to click and swipe and enter in repeated notes. Now the value of the repeated notes is based on the time quantize value you've selected over here. So if I want 16th notes, I'm gonna have to select 16th notes, and then I can click and drag left or right, to enter in multiple notes in a series. Something like that. So it's really great for really fast hi-hats. 
A really helpful modifier key for using the brush tool is to hold shift while using it. So if I click and drag and hold shift, what this will do is it'll keep me on the same row, but if I drag up and down, this will actually adjust the velocity as I enter in these notes. So I can use this to drag in some fairly fast and intricate rhythms for a hi-hat, for example, like I'm doing here. And then let's say once I get to the end of these two bars, I just wanna copy this. I just drag over all of these, hit Command R to repeat. And now I've got a hi-hat line to accompany my kick and snare. And if I want this lower in velocity, I can just click on that note and lower the velocity a bit. If I switch this over to, say, an eighth note, I can use this to create an eighth note bass line. Okay, so to wrap up this video, there are two final really important editing features in the Piano Roll Editor that are not assigned to a specific tool, but these are functions that I think are incredibly important to know and memorize the key commands for. They will speed up your workflow significantly. So you can find these functions by going into Edit, going down to Trim, and the two we're looking for here are Note to remove overlaps with adjacent, the key command for that is backslash, and then no end to following notes, also known as force legato, which is shift backslash. Let me demonstrate both of these. Now, when you record with a MIDI controller, it is very common for notes to overlap like this, especially if you're playing in melodic phrases, we tend to overlap our notes while we play. If you wanna get rid of note overlaps, you can simply just drag over those notes and then press backslash. A little menu will pop up, just hit return, and this will shorten those notes to get rid of any note overlaps. So again, that's backslash. Additionally, when we're recording with a MIDI controller, it's pretty common for gaps to be left between notes where we may not want gaps between the notes. Maybe I want these to be smooth chords with no gaps in between each chord. One thing I'm gonna do to prepare here is just trim up the back end of this MIDI region because when I apply this next function, this force legato function, this is going to push this very last chord out to the end of the MIDI region. So if I select all of these notes and press shift backslash, it'll bring up a similar menu, just hit return, and this will trim the end of each note to be adjacent to the next notes. Again, this is sometimes called a force legato function. So those are two really, really helpful features, getting rid of overlaps with backslash and getting rid of gaps between chords or notes with shift backslash. Those are huge time savers. So that wraps up my overview of the main features of Logic's Piano Roll Editor. Now there's still a lot to explore in the Piano Roll Editor, but at this point we're still in the Logic Pro Essentials section of this series. So I'm just going to limit it to the basics there are other really helpful functions in here like scale quantize, step input. There's the MIDI transform features and functions. There's automation for modulation wheel, volume, note velocity, other continuous controllers like sustain pedal, pitch bend. So there's a lot of stuff in here we still need to explore, but I'll save those videos for the future when we're done with the Logic Pro Essentials section of this series. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.